Hey guys, Data Orchestration Guru here. Um, today, I'm going to be walking you through how you can create a simple extraction and load pipeline within Snowflake. Um, so what we're going to do is check, hey, are all the columns and data quality correct on this forest fires data set that we're going to pull from a public API. So this is a DAG that you can replicate at home as long as you have your own Snowflake database, um, but you can also substitute Snowflake for another database and the basic concepts will still hold true. Um, so let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is import all of our packages and operators. So when you're creating an Airflow DAG, um, you're always going to want to uh, import the Airflow DAG. Uh, this chain will allow us to chain multiple operators together. An empty operator just allows us to create a dummy operator for the start and end um, of our DAG. Um, and then our Airflow providers, SQL column check and SQL table check, are actually how we'll be performing the data quality checking operations. Um, and then you have the Snowflake operator, pretty self-explanatory. This allows us to perform operations within Snowflake. Um, and you have date time, allows us to set the date and time using Unix standard time. Um, and then task group, which allows us to group tasks um, in groups. And so now that we've gotten all the imports out of the way, let's define a couple of generic variables that we're going to need for our Snowflake database. So first we'll have the Snowflake forest fire table. Um, this is going to just be a name for our forest fire table that we're going to create within Snowflake. And then the Snowflake connection ID is actually going to reference a connection we're going to create in the Airflow UI. So one second, we'll take you right over there. So here we are in the Airflow UI. Um, as you can see, got a lot of DAGs cooked up here. But the important thing we're going to do here is go to admin and then hit connections. Um, and what this is going to do is you can see my connection ID I've created here. Um, I'm going to create a new one for Snowflake. And it took us a second, but we got there. So now that we're in the connection screen, we can go to Snowflake. Um, and then we can fill out our connection details. So I actually already have a Snowflake connection built out, but what I'll do is just put in some generic details so you know what you're going to want to fill out. So call it Snowflake default so that the DAG can reference it correctly. Sn connection type Snowflake. Um, then you're also going to want to have your host, schema, login and password, um, your extras. You're going to want to define your host again, um, as well as your database, but it's not really necessary. This is you know purely just if you want to define it that way. Um, but typically what I do is define my Snowflake account, warehouse, database, and region. Um, and I do this because Snowflake, unlike something like Postgres or other um, connections in Airflow, requires a lot of specificity when you're defining it. So make sure you fill out all those fields so it can access your Snowflake correctly. And so once we've got this all saved, um, we can go back to the DAG and we can just reference Snowflake default to call that Snowflake database. Awesome. So now that we're back in Visual Studio, what I'm going to do is now set our boilerplate DAG definition. So with DAG, um, we're going to call it simple snowflake, just keep it nice and simple. Um, we're going to set a description here, example DAG showcasing some data loading, um, rundown documentation, um, if you want, totally optional there. Um, your start date, so that's what we call it in date time, so we can just define start date with just a simple date time declaration. Uh, schedule interval, we're just going to trade this manually, so I won't set one here. Um, and then your template search path, this is going to search for the Snowflake examples um, and reference that here as well. Um, and then we're not going to want to play catch up when we're backfilling, so um, we don't just have it start triggering every single DAG between 2021 and 2023. Um, so one thing we'll need to do here after we've set all that boilerplate code is actually define our connection. So first thing we'll do is go to connections here, um, and then we'll hit plus to create a new record. Um, and so give it a second here. So add and our connection ID. So what we'll do here is create a Snowflake connection, um, Snowflake default. Um, and then what they will do is then every time I call Snowflake default within my DAG, it's going to use all these connection details. So I don't have to worry about, you know, entering them for each task. So you're going to want to fill out the schema, login, password, account, warehouse, database, um, region. And Snowflake just requires a ton of <laughs> different fields you need to fill out to make sure it actually hits that database properly. And so once you're done with that, um, we'll go back to the DAG and get creating. So the first task we're going to create here is a pretty important one, but also a pretty simple one. Um, just going to be creating our table within Snowflake. So right here, you see I'm calling the Snowflake operator. We import it here. 
I'm calling the task ID create table, and then I'm using some SQL. Um, and what this is actually doing is referencing a SQL file that we're gonna create right now. So instead of actually defining the SQL code within the DAG, I'm gonna create SQL files outside of the DAG that I can call to store the SQL code. So if I need to edit it, change anything, I can just edit the SQL code instead of needing to edit the whole DAG and repush it to the Airflow parser. So if I pull over some SQL code I've already generated up here, bring in here, you can see I'm creating a table with some uh, pretty generic columns around you know name, day, uh, temperature, wind, rain, area, all important stuff for a fire, um, but you know, just generic data points. And so now that I've saved this as create forest fire table SQL, I can reference it as a SQL statement in my Snowflake operator. Um, so now that we've got our first task created, let's get started on creating our loading data task. So one second here. So if I bring in our loading data task, you can see we have a similar structure here where we are, where we are using the Snowflake operator again. Um, task ID is insert query here. And then we have a different SQL statement, um, insert or load Snowflake forest fire data dot SQL. Um, and the parameter names, you can see the table name for both of these, I forgot to mention in the last one, is that Snowflake forest fire table we created earlier. So in this one, we're creating that forest fire table called forest fires and Snowflake. Um, and here we're loading data into it. Um, and so to create that SQL statement, what we'll need to do is it's called load snowflake forest fire data. So that'll be this SQL file. Um, and so here, what this is just doing is loading in some dummy data. Um, at the end of this, what I'm going to do is show you exactly uh, where you can download all of these SQL statements, all these example codes. You can run it on your own, customize it um, with maybe some real data of your own. And so now that we've got this defined, let's go back to the DAG, save as load snowflake forest fire data. Um, and then let's create our first task group. So with task groups, you're not actually gonna be following the same syntax at first of query defining tasks. So what we're going to do is add this grouper with task group, and this is going to assign all my subsequent tasks within this wrapper as being part of this task group quality checks. Um, that inherit the default arguments, uh, the Snowflake connection. So we can just run it directly in Snowflake um, as the data quality check group. So once I've defined my task group, I can then define the first task within my data quality task checking group. Um, so here we have column checks. So this is using that SQL column check operator we defined earlier um, with the task ID column checks. Table is gonna be a Snowflake forest fire table. Um, and that is going to be the one that we just created within Snowflake. So we're referencing that and now performing data quality checks directly on that Snowflake database. Instead of needing to parse it out, run through some data quality checks, it's all happening within Snowflake. And once we've gotten our first column check, which is going to say, hey, is, are any of these column IDs equal to null? So any null columns, we're getting them out of the way. Um, we're then gonna to wanna to run some table level data quality checks. Um, so we've got the column checked out. Let's look at the rows. So with this, we're gonna look at table checks, do a little formatting right here. Um, and our task ID is table checks. Table is Snowflake Forest Fire Tables, the same one we've been using. And then the check we're doing here is saying, hey, is any of these um, equal to count times nine? Um, so are any of them exceeding our set parameters? So pretty simple data quality checks, but kind of the point here is to have this be a jumping off point for you to actually implement your own data quality checks. So the way you would do that is basically follow everything up until here. And then for these column mapping and checks, um, you can put in your own data quality checks that you want to implement, and then basically use this code um, for your own data quality work. And so now that we've created our task group, we've got our column checks, table checks all set out. Um, since this is an example, we don't want to use up that super expensive Snowflake store space. I kid, I kid, we all know it's nice and cheap. Um, let's go out of this task group and let's actually delete this table after we're done so we don't have our admin uh, after us for our AWS bill spiking. Um, so if I define that all there, make sure it's indented so it's not in the task group. Um, I can just add a delete table operation, which is delete table. Um, it is going to call another SQL file, which is delete snowflake table. So as you can guess, just calling a drop table function um, and then doing it all in that same table we've already defined um, as the Snowflake Forest Fire table. 
And so now that we're all done, let's set, let's use that empty operator. Remember that we imported at the beginning to set our beginning and ending blocks. So we have something we can schedule to start and stop that just starting at the data uh, snowflake statements. Um, so after I've set those, we can then call in this chain operation. So instead of doing the conventional DAG declaration, what I can do here is actually set them all as a group where I just order them in here with the wrap them with that chain function here. So see chain group, and then I have a list of all of my different functions in order, instead of needing to use the bit mapping that Airflow DAGs typically use. Um, so now we've got a full DAG up and running. Uh, let's go to our hosted, or not our hosted, our locally hosted Airflow environment now and see what's going on here. And will it actually run? So now that we're in our hosted Airflow environment, let's go to simple Snowflake example here um, and actually run it. So if I hit play here, um, first you can see nice grid view, which is good for historical DAGs, but I'm just looking at one DAG. I always like the graph view because you can see everything happen as it happens. Um, so you can see here, if we just look at our DAG as it starts, you can see you know, we have the beginning task completing, and then we're gonna complete the t create the table within Snowflake, um, insert our data into it, and then we have our task grouping, data quality checks. Um, so you have column checks and table checks here. So what this allows us to do is, and the reason we define this as a task group is, we want the column checks and table checks to run simultaneously. Um, so they're both run before delete table operation is run. So all those data quality checks actually get run um, and they're run at the same time. So you get most efficiency because one of the best parts about Airflow is you can run things in parallel um, and that always speeds everything up. So now that we can see those are both run, we're gonna, then gonna delete the table and end this. And so then, you know, you might be thinking, hey, you know, this is great that you showed me how to do this, but how do I do it at home? I don't want to copy all of your Snowflake code. Um, so what we can do is type in Snowflake registry, um, and this will actually bring us to a data quality check uh, example Snowflake on the Astronomer registry. So the Astronomer registry is an amazing repository for if you need to get any kind of example DAGs, modules, you want to say, hey, you know, I want to start working with Snowflake, but I don't know where to start, right? This gives you DAGs where you can basically copy everything I just did, bring in your own Snowflake connection, and then run it with your own data sets. So you don't have to worry about, you know, learning Airflow, understanding any of that. You just come here, install, install the Astro CLI, which is actually a locally hosted Airflow environment that you can get started with just by typing in Astro Cloud Dev Start. Um, so no setting up all the ports, all the different components of Airflow. You get an Airflow environment right out of the box and it's totally free. And then what's also great is because um, you're running the Astro CLI, you can then pull any of these repositories that contain all the code. So you can see this one has all that code I just showed you, um, but then it also has additional code for, hey, if you're doing this from production, if you wanna check out a JSON, different table schemas, um, you can download this and really just adapt it to whatever your use case is um, without you needing to learn all of this yourself. Um, so I'll drop the link for this in the description. I really hope you all check it out um, and I hope you learn something today. Have a good one.